we're talking about mammals. Let's review our science graphic real quick. The study of mammals is called mammology. It is a kind of biology and it is also a kind of zoology, studying animals and animal behavior. So I thought we'd start by saying, what makes a mammal? A mammal has to meet four criteria. Criteria is a fancy word for basically things on a checklist. Okay, so criteria number one, a mammal is warm blooded. What does warm blooded mean? Well, you may have heard that snakes, for example, are cold blooded. They have to bask on a rock or a log and soak up heat from an outside source in order to be warm. Mammals create their heat inside their bodies. I have two new big science words for you. Endotherm and ectotherm. Now, these sound tricky, but they're pretty easy if you break them in half. So therm, it sounds like thermal, right? Thermal is heat. Therm, heat. Endo means inside the body, and ecto means outside the body. So an endotherm creates their heat inside. An ectotherm gets their heat from outside. So mammals are warm-blooded endotherms, and reptiles are cold-blooded ectotherms. We're going to do a whole episode on reptiles, don't worry. But for today, think about how mammals have their heat in their body. They are warm-blooded. We don't have to lie outside in the sun for hours every day, right? Criteria number two. A mammal is a vertebrate. There's two categories, vertebrate and invertebrate. A vertebrate has a backbone or a spine. Now you may be thinking to yourself, okay, so invertebrates, what kind of animal doesn't have a spine? Think about insects, mollusks, worms, jellyfish, and stuff like that, right? Those are invertebrates and mammals are vertebrates. We have a backbone. Criteria number three, all mammals have hair. On some mammals, we call their hair fur. There's actually no difference between hair and fur other than the way that we humans use the word. Criteria four, all mammals feed their young with milk. Think about how you'd see a baby cow called a calf drinking milk from its mom's udder. All mammals feed their young with milk that way. Now you may also have heard that mammals have what's called live birth. Um, so basically that means that the baby comes out as a baby. It's not in an egg. But you may also know that there's a special kind of mammal that does lay eggs. These mammals are called monotremes and it consists of the platypus and the echidna. The platypus and the echidna lay eggs. And so we cannot say that having a live birth is a hard and fast rule for all mammals because monotremes are the exception to that rule and they are still mammals. They meet the other four criteria. They're warm blooded, they're vertebrates, they have hair and they feed their young with milk. Mammals are awesome. They comprise most of the world's most famous animals. Mammals have more highly developed brains, grow to be larger, and tend to act more emotionally than other classes of animals. So of course, we find mammals very exciting and we tend to form the closest bonds with them. Because after all, humans are mammals too. I was joking that I was going to call this episode From Mouse to Moose and explore all of Ontario's mammals. However, Ontario has 77 recognized mammal species. Many of these mammals can only be found in the far north of Ontario by Hudson Bay. You may not know this, but up by Hudson Bay, Ontario actually has a polar bear provincial park. That's right, we do get polar bears in Ontario, along with things like seals, whales, arctic fox, and caribou. Yes, they technically live in Ontario, but it's way too far north for us to ever see. So I thought I would narrow it down to mammals in Kingston Frontenac. That makes sense, right? These are the mammals that you are most likely to see. I've decided to rank them into a series of levels. Level one is super duper common. These are the mammals that are everywhere in Kingston. You're likely to see them pretty much every time you go outside. My second category is normal to see. 
These are animals that you might not see every time you step outside, but you'll probably see at least once if you go for walks in the woods frequently enough. If you see them, you know that they're normal, common, standard staples of Kingston Frontenac and part of the healthy ecosystem. My third category is cool special sighting. These are mammals that are relatively common in Kingston Frontenac and live here normally, but are pretty elusive. Elusive is a word that means hard to find or see. These elusive mammals might be really good at hiding or camouflage, or they might be nocturnal, which means they only come out at night. If there are lots of these mammals living in Ontario, but they only come out at night deep in the forest, what are the chances that people are going to see them? I have seen very few of the mammals in this category, even though I know that they're around. My final category is so rare you should tell the conservation authorities. Now, these mammals aren't rare in that they're super endangered or there's almost none of them left, although that is the case with some of them. But more so I mean rare in Kingston Frontenac. If they're seen in Kingston Frontenac, they are out of their normal range, and it's weird enough that you should alert the Cataraqui Regional Conservation Authority, or maybe Ontario Parks, or the Ministry of Natural Resources, somebody should know, because they're going to be really interested if you saw a cougar, for example, in Kingston. So those are my four categories. Super duper common, normal to see, a cool special sighting, and rare enough that you should tell the authorities. Okay? So let's break it down. Okay, so super duper common. The Eastern Grey Squirrel. You see these squirrels everywhere in Kingston, and they can be grey or black. The American Red Squirrel. The Chipmunk. In this footage, you can see the chipmunk stomping its hind foot to warn of danger, which was probably the fact that I was standing there with a the camera, but I quickly walked away. The Eastern Cottontail Rabbit. An important note is that wild rabbits only ever look like this brown one. If you see a rabbit outdoors that is any other color, you need to contact a pet rescue, such as Kingston Animal Rescue. My rabbit, Matilda, was found outside in the East End and was thankfully reported by someone who finally realized that her coloring was far too light to be a wild rabbit. If Matilda had been left outside much longer, where she had been abandoned by either her owner or a breeder, she would have starved to death or the wild cottontail rabbits would have attacked her. So long story short, if you see a rabbit outside and it doesn't look like this one, it's not a wild rabbit and it needs your help. Other super duper common animals include the groundhog or the woodchuck. You often see these little buddies on the sides of roads and grassy areas in cities. And also voles, shrews, and mice. There are several different species of mice and voles, but I'm not going to elaborate on how to tell them apart. Basically, they're all just cute, especially the shrew. Look at that little nose. All right, now animals that are normal to see. The common raccoon. This banded visitor is common even in the city. Raccoons have very clever hands and they can get into almost anything, including our garbage bins and our picnic coolers. The skunk. If you haven't watched my words from the wild on how skunks spray, check it out. Remember that skunks don't want to spray you. They only spray to protect themselves and only as a last resort. The red fox. The red fox can be found even in urban centers, but is relatively elusive. The porcupine. I love porcupines. They're also really slow moving, and like the skunk, they're not going to want to hit you with their quills unless they feel very threatened, so just give them space and respect. The little brown bat. Now I'm going to take a moment to highlight the bat. Some people don't like bats, but I think that they are just the cutest little dudes. I love bats. Bats are the only mammals that have wings. I mean, how awesome is that? They look like adorable little flying mice. There are several species of bat in Kingston Frontenac, like the silver-haired bat and the eastern red bat, but the little brown bat is by far the most common. Anyway, all you're likely to see of any bat in the wild is just a flash of shadow in the twilight sky. Remember that bats are nocturnal, they only come out at night. Also, they eat mosquitoes, and that's a good thing. So basically, shout out to my underappreciated swooping buddies. You're adorable, and you never land in anybody's hair. That's a myth. All right, some more normal to see animals. The white-tailed deer. I mean, who hasn't seen white-tailed deer? They may not be super common in the city, but if you leave Kingston in any direction, especially during the evening, you're likely to see some. 
The beaver. Of course we have our beloved beavers. Little Cataractway Creek Conservation Area has a family that has lived there for years. You can see their lodge as soon as you walk around the Outdoor Education Center. The muskrat. Not to be confused with the beaver, the muskrat is smaller and has a thin, rat-like tail as opposed to the beaver's large, flat one. That's why it's called a musk rat. The mink. The mink is most commonly spotted along shorelines. The snowshoe hare. The snowshoe hare can look like the eastern cottontail rabbit during the summer months, but in the winter its coat turns a beautiful white color. So again, in the winter, if you see a white rabbit in the snow, and they look like this one, that is a wild rabbit. But again, any other kind of rabbit, not wild. Finally, it is pretty normal to see coyotes. Coyotes are surprisingly common in Kingston, even near the city itself. Sometimes you can hear a pack yipping and howling at night, always in the short bursts of a hunt and then going silent. I live in the East End by the Pittsburgh branch and I have heard coyotes several times. Okay, a special cool sighting. These mammals include the Northern River Otter. The otter is actually pretty common across Ontario, but it's so elusive that we almost never see it. The Southern Flying Squirrel, same thing. It's nocturnal and it's very elusive. It's super hard to catch a glimpse of the Southern Flying Squirrel. The North American Opossum, the Star-Nosed Mole, the fisher, the least weasel, the long-tailed weasel, and the ermine. Now, it's pretty hard to tell these all apart, even for me, but essentially all of these members of the weasel family live in Kingston Frontenac at times, but are super elusive, so it's very rare that you're gonna see one. If you see something that looks kind of like a weasel, it's probably a mink, but of course double check for identification. And of course, the big ones, the black bear. Black bears are actually really common in Frontenac. And if you go out hiking and exploring with your family, it is important to know bear safety. But remember, a bear is not going to attack you for no reason. In virtually all cases, the bear will calmly wander on by. I've had several close encounters with black bears and in all three instances, the bear and I just kind of looked at each other and then the bear walked away. However, knowing a bear's body language and how to react is important. For more information, check out the link below. Moose. Moose are not common in Kingston Frontenac, but they have occasionally been seen. There are a lot of moose living north of Frontenac in places like Algonquin Park and beyond. But moose are huge and they are great wanderers. Sometimes their roaming brings them out of their normal area and they show up farther south than expected, ambling around, munching on water plants and twigs. I grew up in Peterborough, which is north of Kingston, and my family only ever saw one moose up there. I've never seen moose in Frontenac, but at the same time, moose are common enough in Ontario that I still wouldn't put them on the rare list. And now finally, rare enough that you should tell the conservation authorities. Again, I put these in this category because either Kingston Frontenac is an abnormal range for them, or they are endangered all over Ontario. First up is the Pine Martin. The Pine Martin is usually found further north than Kingston Frontenac, so seeing it around here would be worth noting to the authorities. The American Badger. Conversely, the Badger is usually found further south and west, so seeing it here would be very rare. Elk. My family did one time see an elk north of Peterborough. This sighting was considered very odd and the Ministry of Natural Resources was alerted and naturalists came to photograph it. Cougar. It would be pretty rare in Kingston Frontenac, but is in theory possible. I have actually heard of people um, in the Rideau Lakes area who have seen cougars. Lynx. Again, this would be a super amazing rare sighting. Same with the bobcat. Wolverine. Wolverines traditionally live much further north. Grey wolf. Now, wolves have been reported in Frontenac Provincial Park before, but they are still considered rare and would be an astonishing sighting south of Algonquin. You're more likely to hear wolves howling than to see them. Be careful not to confuse grey wolves with coyotes. Coyotes yip and they have short frenzied howls. 
Wolves have long, mournful howls. Wolves are much larger, with broad snouts and smaller, rounded ears. If you think you saw a wolf in Frontenac, it was probably a coyote, or perhaps a coyote-wolf hybrid. But of course, it is always possible that it was a true wolf. Make sure you do your research. Now, how do we look for mammals in the field? Remember that going into the field means when you leave your house, or your lab, or your desk, and you go out into the wild to take observations and do naturalist work. Well, sometimes we can't see the animals themselves, especially the elusive ones, but we can note some things that they've left behind. There are three main categories of this. Tracks, scat, and sign. Tracks, of course, are an animal's tracks. They're footprints. You might see tracks in snow, but also in mud, soft earth, even sand. Scat? Well, scat is animal poop. Sometimes scat can be super helpful in tracking mammals. Sometimes it's actually the only sign you may see that an animal was in the area. For example, black bear scat is pretty distinctive, and if you find some on a hiking trail that seems fresh, you know you need to be proceeding with extra caution. Finally, sign is a bit more obscure. Sign is any sign the animal has left behind that they were there. Some examples of sign include deer peeling the bark off of trees in order to eat it, a beaver chewed stump, or a beaver dam, or a beaver lodge, porcupine chews on tree bark, animal rubs or fur caught in bark or branches, bear claw marks on a tree. Um, they're especially visible on beech trees. I remember as a kid, my dad taught me to look for the pock marks of bear claws on beech trees, and whenever we were up north, it was one of my favorite things to hunt for on our hikes. And finally, dens or burrows. Of course, you should never poke around in a den or a burrow. That's super disrespectful to the animal and also could be dangerous for you. But if you notice one, you could record that observation and try to figure out what animal might have made it or what animal might live there. I'm not going to get into all the different tracks and scats and what they look like and how to tell them apart, because honestly that would take forever. But if you're very keen on learning how to identify and track mammals, I've linked a few helpful resources below. Before we wrap up, I want to highlight some of my favorite mammals from around the world. I don't necessarily have one specific favorite animal, but if I did, it would be the humpback whale. Don't tell the other animals. But these are just some really cool mammals that you may not even know existed. I actually learned about a brand new one when I was doing research for this Words from the Wild. So, are you ready? Let's go. The humpback whale. The most playful of all whales, the humpback whale has been known for singing hours long, complex songs that change with the seasons. The okapi. The okapi is highly endangered and nowadays is mostly only found in conservation zoos. The chinchilla. Commonly a pet, the chinchilla is actually native to Chile in South America. The Borneo pygmy elephant. This species of elephant only lives in Borneo and Sumatra. The red panda. I mean, who doesn't love the red panda? They're so adorable. The giraffe. The giraffe is native to Africa and has a purple tongue, which you may or may not know. The Scottish wildcat. This cat is kind of the pride of Scotland. It may look like a common house cat from a distance, but it is actually a different species that lives in the wild in the Scottish Highlands. The black and white ruffed lemur. These animals are so cute. Watch a video of them eating fruit. The harbor seal. I love all species of seals, bar none, but isn't the harbor seal just so cute? Look at its chubby little face. The wombat. The wombat is native to Australia. The cloud leopard. The cloud leopard is different from other leopards from its unique pattern on its fur. It's native to the Himalayan foothills in Nepal, Myanmar, Thailand, and places like Borneo. The flying fox. The flying fox is the world's biggest bat. It is not actually a fox. They are also commonly known as fruit bats because guess what? They eat fruit. They're native to the subtropics of Asia, Australia, East Africa, and the islands of the Pacific Ocean. The Clydesdale horse. Clydesdale horses were traditionally used by humans to pull heavy loads. The bilby, or the greater rabbit-eared bandicoot, is a small, burrowing, long-eared marsupial native to Australia. The alpine ibex. This species of antelope lives on steep mountain ranges and is able to climb up incredibly sheer cliff faces. 
The gray shanked duklinger. This is a species of monkey, or primate, that lives only in Vietnam. It's incredibly endangered. There are only between 500 and 700 left in the wild. The walrus. Honestly, just shout out to the walrus for being one of the most underappreciated mammals. The Holland Lop Rabbit. As you may have realized, I have a fondness for rabbits. My rabbit Matilda is called a Harlequin Rabbit, but the Holland Lop Rabbit with its floppy ears and its tiny size, how can you not love them? The Amazonian River Dolphin. These dolphins live in fresh water and are unique among dolphins, especially because of their long, thin snout. They can be found, as you may have guessed, in the Amazon River. And finally, the Tanuki. The Tanuki is the Japanese raccoon dog, and this is the mammal that I had never heard of before I started doing this episode. So all of those creatures are mammals. They are all united by being warm-blooded, having a spine, that remember that's being a vertebrate, having hair, also called fur, and feeding their young with milk. There's so much diversity among mammals, it's almost hard to believe. And I love them all. All right, Whew. that was a lot of learning. Uh, lastly, I have the Firefly books, Firefly Wildlife Atlas and Firefly Encyclopedia of Animals, and I just love them. I just think that these are fantastic books, and they're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. There's also one about prehistoric animals and dinosaurs, which. I wasn't able to get out of the library because someone is reading it, which is great. Um, but all three of these books, they're like a nice collection and they cover pretty much everything that has ever lived on planet Earth. Okay, well, I look forward to hearing about all the wild mammals you see this week. <laughs> Stay wild, everybody! <laughs>